we got TJ Wheat, Matt Cross. Go ahead with your question, just address it. If it's anyone specific, just address it before you ask it. Thank you. I guess for the both of you, what are the emotions after turning up and down games like that one? You start with Um Honestly, I feel like we let one slip by us. I feel like we should have came out with more energy, more effort, and we should have beat them. But we let them get to a big lead, and then we had to play a comeback game the whole game. And then it happens that way. Sometimes we might come out on top. Other times we might not come out on top. Um, yeah, similar to what he said. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's even a thought or a think. It's a definitely we let one slip. Um, I don't think there's a lot of people on our schedule right now that when we're playing, how we play, and everyone's healthy, that can beat us. The problem with us is coach has been on us for two weeks about it. Um, we're just not the same. Haven't been playing the same team and it really locking in on what we're supposed to do in our identity that we developed early on. Um, and I think it's just just getting outplayed and not really playing any D and we don't have any consistency. One guy's doing one thing one game, one guy's not doing something the next game, then the next game it's reversed and that's all of us. Can this be something of like a wake up call for you guys? Is this, like you said, Frank has been talking about, is, is this what he was talking about? Yeah, I feel like this is the exact thing he was talking about. He even said it at halftime and after the game, like this was been coming for the past two weeks and now you have to take the medicine, so. Yeah, no, I mean, that's pretty much it. He's, he's been saying it for two weeks and this is exactly what he was talking about. And he, I'm not gonna say it. pretty much, yeah, what he said. <laughs> Matt, 17 points in the second half. Um, after, I'd say, a tough half in the first, the first half for pretty much the entire team, was that almost a flip the switch kind of moment? How do you take ownership of the game in the second half? Um, I think it's, there's n I didn't really, I don't wanna say even take ownership. I think we just kept playing, kept doing what we do, except play harder, more aggressive, I think sometimes. Uh, when I get tired, um, I hang around the arc too much, not rebound, not be aggressive. And what I can do, and I think what's the biggest thing uh, of helping this team is being aggressive. So I think it's just when I'm not in the rhythm of the game, um, kind of just get down low and bang around and help my team out the little things, I think it will come. What kind of impact did going to that press have? Did it seem like it really galvanized you guys and created the chaos that you needed? Sped them up. Trying to force turnovers, get the ball out the guards' hands, and it works some plays. That's the point. And then some plays they got threes out of it. But you gotta keep attacking them, keep forcing them to think, think faster. That's gonna mess them up even more. What was the difference when you were playing that when you guys were able to bring that game back to like within one point to how you played throughout the rest of the game? Like what was that difference that allowed you to bring it so close? I think the energy. We had way more energy in when we was in the press. Like everybody was talking, everybody was up clapping. And all that. I think early on we was kind of more silent and kind of stagnant, but that press got us moving more and got us to a point. Yeah. With Noah out of the lineup, Young sort of taking up the role of Baker and Forza. Well, how do you guys see him being on the court with him as a player and how he developed in the back end of the past season? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I love Key. I think he's he's the, he's he's going to be really good, and I think he's really good for us now. I mean, I say it every time someone asks about him in an interview, but he's already built like a senior, and he's a freshman. I mean, he has no problem with the physicality and um, being aggressive right away and doing what he needs to do. I think that um, just him being in the lineup and playing every practice and working hard has um, shown how much he's developed since the summer, since he's got here. And um, I think that he's learned a lot under Noah, too, being a veteran guard. So, I mean, I got no complaints. I mean, I think he does really well for us. It seemed, it seemed like every time you guys build up the momentum, the crowd was singing how tough was it as a team to sort of pick yourself up after that game? When sort of the crowd gets silent and the momentum goes down? I mean, it happens. Basketball is a game of runs, so we make a run. They might hit a couple shots, but I, we can't just come head down and be like, yeah, so we've got to come back, keep fighting. Eventually, we're going to get a punch that's going to land, and then we're going to take a lead. So we can't just have our head down. we got to keep fighting. Yeah, to follow up with that question, actually, I think that's not even a problem of ours. I think we actually have an old team and Frank's brought in a lot of old guys. So I don't think we have any problem being down. I don't think it affects us at all. I think it's more just running what we do and finding our identity. I don't think we have any problem with being down. It doesn't really rattle us at all. Last one for the guys. 
Matt, uh, you talked about physicality and uh, in the second half you got to the line six times, hit all of them. Was it sort of, um, c c comparing to the taking only one three in the game, was it sort of uh, a strategy for you and for the whole team in terms of attacking them and getting to the, and containing them and getting to the line? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that's kind of Frank's style. I mean, he's uh, punch it like he doesn't care who we're playing. Punch, punch him in the mouth and get on the line and bring it to him every time. I mean, he he thinks that if if you bring it every time, most teams will will crack and don't want to deal with that all game. But it's a it's a discipline. It's something that we got to keep doing all game. Not when we're down, bring it out in the second half. Like it's got to be off rip. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, head coach Frank Martin. Coach, you just want to start off with a statement, and then we'll open it to questions. Uh, yeah, Pat's got a real good team, and uh, I, I uh, you don't beat people like they've been beating people, and and uh, um, by mistake, you might do that here and there, but when you do it consistently, night in, night out, uh, they're a good team, and uh, and obviously we uh, uh, we we haven't. Uh, so what I'm looking for. We talked about it the other day. We, you know, we've regressed in, in our preparation and our attention to detail, and we, I, you know, I, I don't want to call myself Nostradamus, uh, but uh, I think I've been on this saddle for 38 years. I know when something's coming, and uh, I knew this. I knew the team we're playing today, and I know the team we play on Sunday. Uh, we we got no chance of beating them uh, with. Uh, uh, the enthusiasm and the disciplines that we've been playing with. So, uh, you know, today we uh, we took our medicine, and you know, now we keep taking our medicine. Then we'll heal and we'll get back to who we need to be. But and credit their point guard; he completely controlled the game, killed us. We we could never get into offense, uh, uh, couldn't keep him out of the paint. Uh, completely controlled the game. No, losing sucks. It's it, it's there's nothing coming. I just know it's coming, and and um, you know, well, be comforting as if we uh, refocus and and uh, start holding each other accountable again, uh, rather than just show up and get through the day uh, and uh, demand that we all do our jobs a little bit better, and um, uh, and and we start taking steps in the right direction again. If we start doing those things, then I'm not big into you, you know, I've said this before, where you gotta lose to learn, but if we have to lose to learn, then it is what it is. It doesn't make it any more, kind. the loss stinks. It, it, there's no, uh, I don't care. And when you lose two at home this early in the year, it's, a, it's completely unacceptable. Um, yeah, I, I hadn't used the press a whole lot. Uh, uh, we, we tried to junk the game up a little bit. We couldn't guard them. We, we tried to guard them in our zone, tried to guard them in our man. Uh, our guards could not guard their guards. It just, it was just like, uh, it's not like they were running some sophisticated offense. It was just basically space, go at him. And, and we get beat off the dribble. Now everyone's on skates behind trying to keep the ball out of the paint and scrambling. Um, and uh, uh, so then, you know, we, I mean, we got down whatever, 15, 14, whatever it was early in the second half. And um, I said, let's, we got to try something else because what we're doing today ain't working. And at the end of the day, uh, our job is to figure out a way to win today. Uh, and, and, and then tomorrow, let's fix the problems. And uh, so we, we junked it up a little bit and it worked. But then as the game, like most good teams, they got older players, they're good, they, they know how to play. Um, uh, they realize, okay, this is where the press is coming. This is, so they just spaced us and then they kind of came at us. And, and then, again, I'm not going to ever, I, you know, I told you we got no leadership. That's a general comment. I'm never going to uh, speak about individual players, but we've got 
couple guys on our team that there's certain rotations. The reason we don't press a lot is because if you're going to press, you need five guys playing with maximum effort and understanding every rotation. Because when you press, you're exposing yourself. So you constantly have to know where to go. And we got a couple of our guys on our team that, uh, you know, when we're down 15, uh, uh, I've got to play the better offensive players to try and get back in the game. But there's a reason that, you know, they struggle defensively at times. And uh, so we, we, that's part of the growth. That's part of the journey. It's uh, uh, as good as everything felt, you know, three weeks ago when we left uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, it feels equally bad right now, even though I knew it was coming. Yeah, point guard. It, it's you know can't guard. It, it's it, you know if your center can't block the nose guard, your quarterback got no chance. If your point guard can't guard their point guard, you got no chance. And we just we couldn't guard. But the problem was that even when we went zone, other people wouldn't guard their point guard. So you know when we're man, it's easy to pick on our point guards on you know Key and, and Rasul, uh, but. Even when we went to our zone, they just pass it around and get it back, and somebody else would go and just you know drive the ball into the paint and no resistance. And you know that's some of the stuff that I've been talking about uh, that we've we've uh, regressed because guarding the ball requires incredible discipline, incredible toughness, and incredible enthusiasm, and you got to do it every day, not just when you're in a good mood. And when you don't do it every day, you create bad habits. And if you have bad habits, you get exposed the way we did today. The question that was stepped up to the point, like, just think about their development so far and their maturity. Can they step up in better different ways? Do they need to line up and increase that a little bit more? Uh, they're freshmen, man. They, they, you know, they, uh, uh, they're battling. They're, they're trying to figure it out. Um, you know, when, when I sit here four days ago and I say our leadership's non-existent, that hurts freshmen. Freshmen need help internally. They don't understand how good and how hard and how disciplined UMass Lowell is going to play. They don't comprehend that. So you need to teach them in practice. Well, when your team's not practicing the right way, then freshmen think this crap's a lot easier than it really is. And then you go play a team like this, and 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 you know, and they battled. They they battled, uh, but uh, um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't good enough. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, how do you deal with that, knowing that you have some sort of crowd behind you? Obviously, you say you want to get to the goal. Yeah, the fa- yeah, there, yeah. The fans were awesome, man. I, I can't be more thankful uh, uh, for – I don't know what the crowd was today, but it's the first time since I'm coaching here where I actually feel the crowd behind me. I, I hadn't felt it before, and I felt it today. Uh, and that's, that's a credit to our, our fans and – um, um, you know, just stick with us, man. We're gonna figure this out. You know, we we got good dudes, and and we're gonna we're gonna work, and and, and we're not going away. You know, it's uh, it's part. I, I told you guys before the season started. I told our players before the season started. We don't sign up for a day. We sign up for a journey, and and the journey requires good days and bad days. And today's one of those bad days. But uh, we we need our fans to understand that we're in this journey to the finish line. How important was Matt Cross's second half performance with 17 points and making that a close game again? Yeah, I'm really happy for Matt. Uh, happy that, you know, he saw the ball go in the basket. He, he's, he's been frustrated with himself um, because he feels that he, Matt's one of those guys, he thinks every shot he shoots should go in the basket. Um, but uh, uh, he, he, he puts a lot of pressure on himself from, from that standpoint. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, he had five steals, I think. I mean, and, you know, gave gave us a toughness that that on plays on loose balls, uh, um, you know. But part of the part of the thing that's killing us right now is is rebounding. I don't know what the numbers were today, but we haven't been very good rebounding the basketball. Um, and they're as good as there is in the country at rebounding the ball, at least at this point in the season. Um, and uh, uh, Matt gave us a toughness there. You know, the rest of us kind of just stood and watched a little bit. So it's. Uh, we just we got outplayed, man. It's just simple as that. We got beat to the punch. We got beat to loose balls and couldn't guard the ball. Uh, rotations were late, um, you know, and because you know to defend the point guards a little bit. Okay, so so we get beat off the bounce. So then someone else has to help. So then someone has to help the helper, 
and we never got to that point. And, you know, we gave up two, three. When we cut it to that four or five range, three, dribble drive, no, no, no ball screen, nothing, just dribble drive, get beat. The guy that runs to help helps, and the next guy don't rotate. We gave up three layups on that play, you know, and uh, uh, it's, that's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> that losing stinks. I mean, <laughs> and that when you don't do things the right way, you're going to you lose. I mean, you know, and, um, uh, you know, we're in this together. We, we signed up to, to win together, and we signed up to have bad days together. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I just hope that uh, somehow, some way, we get guys in that locker room that start leading. No one's dragging us down. But no one's willing to stand up and lead right now, and uh, so I, until we don't get that, you're going to continue to see inconsistencies. Thanks, coach. Yep. Thank you, coach. Thank you, coach. Yep. Thank you, coach.